So let me ask you a question. How do you think players develop high-end hands? In the games you play or during on-ice team practices? What if I told you it was neither and I can prove it? You interested? All right, let me explain. As a starting point, we should share what's already been established. Over the years, there's been several game puck possession studies conducted, the most recent being USA Hockey. During the Salt Lake City Olympics and youth national tournaments that year, a team of USA Hockey data retrievers executed the most comprehensive game puck possession study to date. They'd pick a couple players from each team and track how long they had the puck in their stick for a 60-minute game. Here's what their data revealed. For the Olympics, the men's gold medal game had one minute and one second of puck possession time. For the men's per game average for the entire Olympics was 1 minute and 7 seconds. And the women's per game average for the entire Olympics had 1 minute and 12 seconds of puck possession time. For the 2002 Tier 1 Youth National Tournaments, for the 12 and under category, had an average puck possession time of 38 seconds for a 45 minute game. For the 14 and under group, they averaged 1 minute 6 seconds of puck possession time for a 48 minute game. And finally, for the 16 and 18 and under groupings, revealed only only 48 seconds of puck possession time for a 51 minute game. I think this paints a pretty clear picture that games are not where players develop their stick skills. So question number two, are practices where players develop wicked good hands? I just retired from a 17 year coaching career spanning from initiation mites all the way up to the high school level and I was always curious to see how long a kid had the puck on their stick for one of my practices, but never seemed to have the time to find out until now. So my team and I visited a number of local rinks for a couple months, filming an entire 60 minute practice for every youth level of hockey, both boys and girls, from mites to U12 to bantams, ending at the high school level. We'd be set up before practice started and pick a random player to film for the entire ice session. Then we'd edit the clips to show only the times he or she had the puck on their stick. What do you think the average was from all the samples we collected? 10 minutes? 15? Maybe 20 minutes? So here's what our research uncovered. The highest totals accumulated by a player was 7 minutes and 11 seconds. The shortest samples were just under 2 minutes of puck possession time during a 60 minute practice. When we averaged out all the samples, the number that comes in was roughly 4 minutes. That's it! Practice after practice that we attended, the numbers came in the same and were super consistent. What was interesting was the players that got the highest totals did two things the majority didn't do. Number one, they were on the ice shortly after the Zamboni finished flooding the rink. At the beginning of practices, there's always a gap of time prior to practice starting where players skate around handling and shooting pucks. Players that got out early typically would get one to two minutes of extra puck possession time during this window. The second thing players with higher totals did was when waiting in line for their turn to do a drill, they didn't just sit there doing nothing, they had a puck on their stick doing something with it. Again, these players would pick up an additional 30 to 90 seconds of puck possession time this way. If you're not satisfied with where your stick handling, passing, and shooting ability is currently at, you now know the reason why. Because five to six minutes of puck possession time and two hours of ice time isn't enough puck touches to advance to the higher levels. I thought that was some pretty important information that you should know. Why don't you head on over to the next video and let's see what's next.